You know, there's very few things that I enjoy more than springtime in the Ozarks and crappie fishing. We're early spring right now, a little bit of pre-spawn on the crappie. So the main thing that I'm gonna be targeting today is some of those big pre-spawn females that are gonna be a little bit deeper than the males. The males, they're starting to get their color. They're starting to get colored up a little bit, starting to think about spawning, but those females are staging out a little bit deeper. And I love catching big crappie. Let's go see if we can find some. You know, obviously there's a lot of different ways to crappie fish. Today, we're kind of targeting brush, going to the bank, trying to catch some males, coming out into the deeper brush out here, trying to catch some of the females that are staged out. But, uh, you know, this is perfect. This is exactly what I'm looking for. New tree that fell in, real limmy. I've got the dirt on the root because it's a big, long tree and it comes out. It's probably 10 or 12 foot deep out here at the end of it. And there should be some bigger females stacked out here. There we go. Got out here on the end of it, that's a nice fish. Big old fat female, that's what we're after. So, you know, that, that's another thing that I try to do quite a bit whenever I come to a brush pile, is I'll start on the outsides of it and then kind of work myself into the middle of it. Make sure they're not stacked on the outside. I don't want to go right in there and blow the entire brush pile out right off the get-go. So, found a nice little 12 inch Black crappie, little female, plump full of eggs. There's something about that little thump that these guys do that's just pretty special. As we're fishing today, you're gonna see me put this on my hook pretty regular. Little, they call them crappie nibbles. And I'm a huge fan of them. Uh, I do believe that it helps you get bites. Uh, I believe the, the color is important. I think the pink, kind of gives a little bit of a flash. A lot of times I'll throw into a brush pile two or three times without it when they're biting pretty good and not get a bite. Put one of those on, throw it in and get a bite. So it's just proven itself year in, year out that uh, it does make a difference. a second to figure out where they were at on that tree but they're out here of course you got a bad wind keep pushing me in but that's going to be 10 and a quarter inch fish but we'll measure it and make sure put your tail down there joker 10 and a half so i use a 16 ounce jig head that i pour myself um, I, I like i like the the round head with a little barb to keep my keep my lure from falling off um, this is like I said this is something that I pour myself and and I'm very passionate about this red hook um, I think that is a huge key to, to, to getting crappie bites um, not that you're not going to get them if you don't use them you can get them using anything but I, I, I do feel like um, that that red hook is almost like a bloodline right it's like they see that blood, it helps them to react. So just a gray lead head, some sort of red and white sparkly, red hook, pink crappie nibble. That's the, that's the bait that I have the most confidence in that they're going to bite. There's the crappie. That's probably a male in there shallow like that. He just come up and sucked it in. He didn't even bite real hard. I'm gonna net him because I don't think he's hooked real good. Uh, nope, that's a female. Oh, black crappies. You know, one thing about these black crappie, here in, in, in uh, this part of the world, we'll catch both black crappie and white crappie. Uh, this morning I always caught some black crappie, but these black crappie, if you look, they're so thick along the backside right here, you know, they get real heavy. They're just a real thick fish. And the fact of the matter is, I think people crappie fish because they love to eat them. And there's more meat on a black crappie than there is a white crappie. You know, there, there's certain keys I think that uh, that crappie love. Transition zones. If you look at the bank right here, it's, it's bluffy and then it transitions into gravel. Um, 
Obviously during the spawn, the crop you're gonna to wanna to use the gravel, the pea gravel to spawn. So any sort of transition zone like we're seeing right here is something that I look for um, wherever I'm fishing. Uh, one thing I don't think that can be beat or replicated no matter where you at, what the bank looks like, anything else, and that structure, and that's new structure. If you can find a new tree that's been blown over during the winter time, like the one we just left, you know, any sort of structure, no matter where you're at, there could be a crappie on it. But if you can find the perfect storm where you have, um, you know, a transition zone in the bank uh, from, from chunk rock to pea gravel with some structure, a lot of times you kind of find the money, the money spot. I, I take a lot of people crappie fishing and I think the one mistake that I see them make quite a bit is they reel too fast or too soon. Um, like right here, the, you know, you can see this tree coming in. It's an old tree, it's been here for years. Uh, but, you know, I'll pitch in there and I'll get my jig where I want it to. And then I'm not reeling right now. I'm just maybe pulling the tip up just a little bit to keep it moving down the log, but I'm letting it sink, let it get down there where the fish are at. You know, the fish aren't, then there they are. See, you gotta get down to them, right? Most people, and that's a male, he was on the bank down there, but most people are reeling too fast. That I, I never reeled right there to catch that fish, right? threw in there and just let it slow roll back to me and this fish hit it on the fall. So I think a lot of people reel too fast. They're too scared of getting hung up and losing their lure to let that happen. But if you get to the point to where you can let that happen, you're gonna catch more crop. I'll tell you one thing that's really uh, important to catching crappie, just like that one right there. Those guys fished that log. I watched them fish it for 10 minutes and they didn't never fish it from this side. And that's exactly what I wanted to talk about is boat position. A lot of times you want to, you have to be, a lot of times you have to ha have to give the right presentation. I'm going to stay off there because there's another one in there and I'm going to catch it in just a second. But a lot of times, a lot of times uh, the way you present the lure to the crappie is going to be the difference in catching them or not. Those guys, I watched them come up this bank and they come and they sit on this side of that log and they pitch the other way, pitch the other way. And the whole time I was watching them, I was like, if they'd come the other side, they'd catch the crappie. But, you know, I could pitch over here for half a day and never catch one. So I can go right back to that side where I just did it, let it slow retrieve back to me and probably catch another one. And that's half the battle, is once you find that, once you find what they want, what they like, what they'll bite, do it again, and do it again, and do it again. And then when they quit, go to the next one. You know, the presentation and, and the way you set your boat for the structure is vitally important when it comes to catching crappie. Um, now, granted, I could, I could possibly throw into this, into this snag from here and maybe catch one if they're thick in there. But the best thing that I can do is right now I'm coming across the top of it. So I'm only over structure for just a second. If I can come up here and stay 10, 15, 20 yards away, far enough away that I'm not gonna spook the fish that they're there, and, and this, as this log's laying in the water and position my boat where I can come down that log and as my lure is sinking, I'm staying with the log. So I'm in structure longer, I'm gonna be around the fish. I don't know if they're two foot deep at the top end of the log or 12 foot deep at the bottom end of the log, but in just a second when I pitch in there and I let it float down that log and when I catch him, then I'll know where they're at. I'm going to talk a little bit about the setup that I was using to catch crappie today. You know, over the years you go through different types of rods and reels and you finally settle on some stuff that you like. And, and really this is my favorite combo that I, that I fish with. You can see I got several of them set up the same way, but um, I'm a huge fan of the Fluger President uh, reels, um, the, the smaller version of, because I'm, you know, typically white bass or crappie or something like that is all I'm going to be using. I think they call it maybe the micro, uh, but it's the president version from Fluger. Uh, and when it comes to the rod, uh, I'm pretty particular on the rod that I want to use. Um, I like a six and a half foot rod. I don't like one longer than that. I don't like one shorter than that. Um, six and a half just seems to be a, a really good length for me. Um, fits in the boat well, cast it good, uh, and I like a fast action. Uh, the thing about crappie is when they bite, it's just one little thump and it's quick. So when it goes time to set the hook, you know, I want something I can move fast and set the hook to. And then one thing that I use too uh, is, uh, is I use uh, a four pound test line uh, every time that I, that I go crappie fishing. Um, I've tried six pound, I've tried eight pound. 
Um, I've tried three pound. Three pound's a little bit too light, I think. Um, with four pound, every once in a while, you can get lucky and get that jig back whenever you get it hung up. Uh, six, eight pound, I think, is just too heavy. Uh, four crappie, I think there's a little bit of line sensitivity. You know, they'll see the line and maybe turn away every once in a while. So uh, four pound tends to work good with me. Um, I like Maxima line. That's what I use most of the time, the green Maxima line, four pound test. So that's kind of the, the combo that I use for crappie fishing. That old big tree right there, when it fell, I, I will, I'm not exaggerating, over that tree right there, I have probably caught a thousand crappie. There they are, still there. Boy, that's a good fish, Dave. Good fish. And my phone's ringing. Best crappie of the day, my friend. That's what we're after. That's a two pound crappie. Boy, even after a thousand crappie, it's still producing. I guess we're up to a thousand one. My goodness, he ate that thing. Look how far he sucked that down. That's kind of odd for a crappie. Sometimes eat them not that hard. You know, you got something they like whenever they'll go that deep for it. There we go. That is maybe my favorite thing in the world. Giant crappie on a jig. And that's a pretty crappie.